It's empty. Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, Double, and today I'm going to do another follow-up video for the Pocket Go, but it's not just for the Donner Pocket Go. It's about any of these units that use that N profiling or the MEFCS software. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look through my playlist, especially the MVAVE playlist or the Donner playlist or Playwell. Uh, good grief, I've done so many of these videos about units like this. Even the KPT Pro, which is not pro i really like this donner one because it's small a lot of these units are fun to use and they're really easy to tweak and i want to teach you guys in this video how to convert nam profiles right everybody talks about nam captures and all that kind of stuff i want to take some nam captures of some amp heads and convert them into am3 data files what's that that's the little files that these guys can read these can't read NAM captures right off the bat. So you have to use a software process to convert them to the proper files for these to read. Okay, I know it's a, it's a lot to talk about. It's really not too hard once you get past the quirky steps. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what you need to do to get started with N and how to do some of these conversions. Now, if you want to actually see a video about the updated capture process, leave me a comment below. This one, we're just going to talk about converting NAM captures to AM3 data files for our devices like the Lakato multi effects or the Donner Pocket Go or the MVAVE Tank G. They'll all use these guys. There's plenty of them. Look at the units that you have. If they'll take AM3 or AM4 data files, you'll be able to do this. So let's look at the software first that you need. The first thing you need to do is go over to the website qvave.com. I'll link that down below. And it is, this is pretty much the go-to page for a lot of these companies to use certain pieces of software. Your unit might not actually be listed on this page, but it will probably work if it is one of the AND-based units. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't done this before, is grab the initial AND software. Grab it. It's going to download it from the cloud server, doing all of this kind of stuff. You now have access to the mega folder that they have. This is the initial and RAR. It's two gigs. You need to download that. If you'd like to read more about it, you can do that. The first thing you need to do is grab the initial and software. Once you have that, you're going to have a folder and it's going to look just like this. Hold on, so I'm in the middle of editing this video and I realized I never say this and I didn't say it in this entire video. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to share all that kind of youtube -y stuff. I really, actually, I am really getting close to 10,000. I know, not real close, but getting there and I could really use your help because I wanna do a giveaway at 10,000 subscribers, okay? So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below. This is the type of video I actually really like making. I really like diving deep into gear and showing people how to use it or at least get the most out of that piece of gear in like this type of a video. So if that's your kind of thing, please subscribe, all right? And hit thumbs up on the way out the door or something like that. It's just gonna be one folder and then it's gonna be one more folder and then it's gonna be one more folder, okay? And that last folder is called the app folder. That's where all of the and stuff lives. So we're gonna go back over to the app download page and we're gonna grab the AN 1.08 update. Now that one just downloads right away. So you extract it, okay? Once it's done, you extract it and put all of the contents from that extracted folder. You can copy and paste them in or you can just drag them over, but you want all of that stuff that's in that update folder in this app folder. And I'll just scroll down so you can see everything that's in it but it's a lot more than what was in the initial AN app. And that's really all you have to do. It's not gonna install the app. It's just gonna put everything in this folder. And when you run the programs, it's gonna run from that folder. So you also don't wanna really kind of move that folder around too often. I just keep it in a folder on my desktop. Moving it around sometimes can kind of confuse Anne. And I'm going to get into a couple of the tips that I have for you to help Anne get straightened out because I did find out something when doing these conversions that it was best to have a single folder on my desktop with nothing else in it and 
use a very specific naming convention. So we'll get into that in just a second, okay? Once you have the Cinco N software installed and have it updated properly, you'll be able to run over to tone3000.com and you can grab anything, you know, you could grab full rig files or you could grab amp head files or distortion pedal files. All of these units will work with that. If you use the full rig, then you're going to want to disable the IR within your unit. And if you're grabbing, like I am in this instance, some amp heads, you're going to want to go ahead and engage the IR slot on your unit for the patches that you're using these for. There's plenty of options over at Tone 3000 for amplifiers. I grabbed a few. Some of them have packs, which you'll see next to the folder. There'll be a number, and that means that there are 63 captures in here. Let's say you do grab just a head-only unit. It will let you know when you're grabbing those units that they are head-only and that you will need to activate the IR slot. So that's something to keep in mind. The first thing you want to do when you grab any of these captures, if it's zipped, is go ahead and unzip it. I use 7-zip. Extract the files where you'll remember where they are. I'm going to do everything here on the desktop. In fact, I kind of recommend you using the desktop to create these captures. It's just something that worked better for me was to actually have a single file in a single folder on the desktop and seem to react best that way. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I'm picking which one of these I want. And this is where it gets to be very important. You have to create a brand new folder with nothing in it, and then you cannot have any spaces or special characters. So basically just letters and numbers only. And if you need space, use an underscore. And now in this empty folder, I'm going to grab the capture that I want. I found a BE-100 with a clon in front of it. So I made a copy of it and I pasted it into this folder. So that's the only thing in this folder. The next important step is you need to rename this file to the exact same name that the folder is. You have a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can type it in manually or you can just copy and paste the name from the actual folder by clicking on it, hit rename, and then I do a copy move, or you can do control C and grab that. And then once you have that name on the clipboard, you'll be able to go back in and paste it over the actual NAM file name. That's maybe a little easier for some people. If it's really short, you can just go ahead and rename it like I just did. Next, we're going to move over to the Cinco An app. Click on the train section and you're going to want to make sure that you have selected NAM to AM3 data, and then you're going to select a directory. Now, this is going to be where we have stored that single NAM capture that we want to translate over to AM3 data so that our units can use it. I directed it to that folder on the desktop, there are several options here for learning rates. It depends on how fast or how slow your computer is. Mine seem to do all of this pretty quickly. I'll flash the actual number, the name of the card up on the screen. It's nothing special. It's just what came with my HP. And if you've done everything right, you will see the Cinco and app start. And you'll start to see this process. And down in the lower right corner, you can see that it will start a left time or that's how much time is left in the process of this capture for me it took about 20 minutes or so the other number that you want to keep an eye on is the loss we want that number to go down 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 eventually that number for me became a 0 0.01 i think something like that if you would like to do another one something that you have to remember is you have to do all the same things take a single one create a new folder i like putting it on the desktop and just was having a problem if I was doing it out of the actual AN folders. It wasn't doing this for me. I recommend you store your NAM captures on your desktop. My desktop now has a bunch of them on there. Go back through, you're gonna to have to reset the training directory. So select the new folder that you want to use that has the new capture. For example, I'm doing an SLO 100 in a lead mode right now. And then you go through the same process. 
It took about the same amount of time for all of these to go. Whether or not I hit slow or, or fast training, you will get a more accurate reading by selecting batch size 1024 that will also take a little bit longer. So maybe play with those numbers, but I like trying to push it and I don't mind taking a little time for a capture to happen. Remember that this uses your graphics card. So mini computers, uh, little things that just don't really have very powerful graphics processor are not going to work very well with this. It's going to take 18 hours to, to do it. I know because I'm speaking from experience, I started doing these on a mini PC and it would take well over a day just to get one capture done. It's a lot easier if you have you know, a, a $400, $500 computer or at least something with a dedicated video capture device. So once you've converted a few NAM files, you can actually click on the individual folders and see what's in them. We have an AM3 WAV file, really large, and then you see we have an AM3 data file, much smaller. We can work with the AM3 data file in a couple of different ways. One, we can import it right in to the unit through the MEFCS software, which is really nice. That's a nice update that they've recently done. Or we can really further tweak the NAM profile. By tweaking it, I mean we're going to actually grab that folder and we're going to grab that individual file that we want to work with, the AM3 data file. We will select that just the same way as when we're trying to do the captures by directing the software to the proper folder and then clicking on the proper file. This time it'll be the AM3 data file. You can double click on it or hit open. That will put it into the software. Now, I don't have a unit connected at the moment, but if you did, you would hit the link button. After hitting the link button, you could then hit the send button and you could hear yourself doing a bunch of these tweaks to the actual file. For example, I can adjust the frequency of the mid range when I turn the mid knob. I can adjust the frequency of the base range response and where it's gonna go and even how many more dB it's going to add or subtract and then really make that NAM capture your own by sitting here and doing that. You wanna make sure you're using an IR file if you're doing one of these non-cabinet captures and you would import that IR file. You can link it to the unit and use the IR files that are on the unit in order to hear it. You would hit send in order to audition it, save in order to actually save this new file to the unit. That's the difficult way. The easier way would be to use MEFCS. It's just not quite as deep and tweaky. Okay, so it sounds like I'm having some problems with this BE with the clon. Oh. If you've grabbed that file from the Google link that I'll leave in the description, it might not work. Maybe it does report back if you happen to have it, but I'm just getting nothing but noise. Anyway, here's another one that is working. There's the Dumble, and it's currently just using the cabinet that's on the block here. And then I can go through and adjust the level of the amp. If, if the NAM capture is a little quiet, I can adjust how gainy I want it to be. You know, and then you can save it to the device. Now, I think I've already saved a couple of these on here. Um, and in some of these instances, I've actually had to turn the unit off and on again in order for the amp names to appear here. I've been slowly overwriting base amps. You know what? I think it worked. That that clon worked. The BE and the clon worked in this one. I wonder why it's not working in this one. Uh, report back if you happen to have downloaded that file. Let me know if you're having any luck with that. Um, but yeah, if you have done the capture without an IR, like I've done, then you want to make sure you have your cabinet selected. You can always add your own cabinets as well, just by importing them the exact same way. Open the local file and then you can audition the cabinet and send it to the device. I grabbed the Modern Boutique, one of the ones from, I think it's Origin. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now you have NAM converted files for use in these little guys that use the AND software or the MEFCS software. Real easy to just do the conversion and then grab them and put them in through the MEFCS software or you can actually go into the Cinco AND app and grab it here. I can link the unit that I'm currently linked. Now I can demo that by hitting that green button. I can use the IR that's in here or I can import a different one. And now if I want to find one of my preamps, I can grab like that guy right there. And now I can start to tweak the low end. <laughs> which is just a, a, a little little tweakier than the other ones. You know, I can make that frequency what I want. I can come into here and make the mid a little more what I would maybe like to adjust. I can open up the gain a little bit more. And again, I can add a little more level to it if it's a quiet NAM capture. And then when I'm ready, I can send it to the device audition it within the device and I can actually go back over to the software and kind of tweak it the MEFCS software and then what I want to do is save it to that device and now it has saved it to the device in the position that that we're at right now so that's just overwritten what I had in there before so I guess what I'm saying is it's a little easier to use the MEFCS software to just import it and just go with a good sound. If you really want to tweak, you got to use the Cinco and AM and IR section and really get in there and get deeper. Either way, it's a great way to expand the tonalities that are offered within these little mini multi-effect devices that a lot of the companies are using these days. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it's a little longer than normal, but this is the type of video I like to make, these kind of deep dives. Hey, you guys, Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.